In this video, we're going to discuss the two-way radio operation of the comm. You will have sources coming in from the music from your phone. You're going to have sources coming in from your two-way radio. So when you adjust the volume on the intercom, it's going to adjust all those sources simultaneously. But you can adjust the radio's uh, volume independently by just turning the radio knob. So if somebody is coming in faint on the two-way radios, all you got to do is turn this up. And your goal is to get the volume to match for the people who are inside when they speak and what they sound like with the people who are outside the vehicle. You want them to, to have the same level of volume. So you're going to see four rows on here. These four rows are similar to your car stereos, FM1, FM2, FM3, FM4. Um, they're all two-way radio bands. We have programmed to be them to be all the same channels. So it would be like taking your FM1, FM2, and program with all the same presets. So they're literally identical. Um, the only difference, and the reason that you see this, they look differently, is that the first two are displaying the channel number. The third one is displaying the channel name. And the fourth one is displaying the channel frequency. There's a little arrow here that shows you which channel you are on. So if I, for example, spin this knob right here, you're going to see that that channel switches. This is how you can sw switch, change channels is by spinning this. Um, if you want to switch for whatever reason, let's say that you like to see the name instead of the number, you can press this button right here and you can see that it says A, B, C, D because this is band A, band B, band C, band D. So whatever one the arrow is on is the one that's the active one. You will see that even on these lower two, it is displaying still the channel uh, number, that little 15 in the right corner. So if I come over here and I come down to the frequency one and I spin this, you can see that's going from 16, 17, 15. So they're all on the same one again right now. So uh, there really isn't a ton of reason to shift between those. You can just literally always leave it on that and recognize you're just on the, whatever the top one is. Um, there is some additional advanced functionality that we will um, show you in other videos where having multiple bands actually does provide some kind of cool functionality. Like the Vox is tied to your microphone for in-car communications. So if um, somebody inside here speaks that is based upon the box setting that's down here. The radio has a little bit different, has in its own internal um, way of doing that. So we're going to show you what that sounds like right now. I'm going to turn some music on and I'm going to have um, Kirk broadcast over this and you're going to hear the transmission come through. So take it away, Kirk. I want to know how that S4S is sounding over the box. I want to know how that S4S is uh, installed on that X3. How's it sounding, Dustin? Over. That's, uh, I'm going to press my page to talk. So that's sounding really good. So, Kirk, I want you to talk a little bit because I want to, them to hear me adjust the, the volume. So we installed the X or the first S4S on the X3 today. Uh, the install went very well. We're going to have a video on how that install works and showing the different ways you can install the power, run the cords, and... Okay, so you were able to see right there the volume shift. Now I'm going to, um, I'm going to play some music because when two-way transmissions come over the radio and you're playing music, the, the music should mute and not compete with those two-way transmissions. So I'm going to hit play, but I want to show you that sometimes the uh, two-way radio transmissions will compete with the music muting. And I'm going to show you how to fix that. So I'm going to hit play, and then I want Kirk to transmit. And you're going to see that I'm doing it by adjusting the volume um, of the radio. The louder the volume, the easier that the music's going to mute. The lower the volume, the more difficult the music is um, to mute. So here comes the music. So I'm going to cut in and see how the music box works with the radio. Over. The uh, 
uh, music box is working great um, in that case. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make I'm gonna show you when it's not working super great. So go ahead and talk again, Kirk. So if you got volume down to Okay, so you see, when I turned the volume down, it made it so that that transmission was um, being interrupted um, by the music. So you want to have the radio volume turned up higher. The higher you turn that radio volume up, the better it's going to box your music. So that relationship... I want you to see that relationship and understand that in case that you're listening to music and you're like, man, it, the music's playing over the two-way radios. That stinks. All you really have to do, turn your radio volume up, and that will fix that. Okay, so I'm going to show you one other thing on this, um, and that is with relative to the music. If you press the FM, you have the ability to press this button right here, and it will turn on <laughs> FM music. Okay, so if you don't have a phone, you can always take your listen to music. Um, that music does not box through the intercom. So when I talk, um, the music's going all the time. However, when somebody speaks American over the two-way radio, test one, two, three, testing the transmission coming in with the FM radio. Over. So you see it auto box for the two-way transmissions. And then it comes on back automatically after a few seconds. So that's how the Vox does work with uh, FM radio, but it does not work um, for, for in-car um, communication. Okay, one other thing that um, we have seen that occasionally happens is people will accidentally hit this button right here, and their radio looks like that. And so they are then going... What in the world is going on here? How do I get this? Uh, how do I get the thing work back to the way it was? It's just this button right here. Okay. So if you see it switch to frequency mode, that's how you switch it back. A lot of people will ask about uh, using a hand mic with this and how we do that. So we don't recommend um, using the hand mic unless you're programming. It's uh, is really easier just to keep your headset in and way quicker than it is to go and pull out the dust plug that's in here and pull your mic out of the bag and plug it in, but you can do it. If you want to run the radio um, just like a standalone two-way radio, you can plug that hand mic in. You have to reach around the back and there is a cord that's plugged in the um, the left side of the radio on the back, it's a 3.5 millimeter cord. You have to unplug that cord um, in order to activate the external speaker. Um, and then to, before you can hook your headsets back up through the intercom, you have to plug that cord back in. So um, not the slickest thing to have happen. What is much slicker than that is to simply take a 3.5 millimeter cord and plug it into the back of the intercom in the audio outsource and then plug that other end of that cord into like a Bluetooth speaker, um, the auxiliary end of a Bluetooth speaker. And what that does is um, transmits all everything that's going into your intercom out through that speaker. So turning the radio on and off is really simple. Um, this is really important if you have connected your system directly to your battery. You're going to have to do this every single time. If it's connected to your accessory, it'll turn off automatically. But um, you just press and hold. And to turn it back on, press and hold. There you go.